With so many plague-ridden zombies about in the start collecting Death Guard box, today I thought we'd talk about Poxwalkers. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're focusing on the shambling horde of undead mortals, who perhaps Grandfather Nurgle has been a little bit too generous towards. We're going to look at the disease-ridden threat that is Poxwalkers, go over their datasheet, how they can be made even nastier in-game, and how I would use them on the tabletop. So the Imperial citizens who are inflicted with the walking pox become a troop's choice for Death Guard, they're 5 points a model, and you can take them in units of 10 to 20. They're basically a horrifically durable horde infantry option for the forces of the Death Guard. Unfortunately, in the new codex, Games Workshop did rein them in a bit in terms of just zombie spam lists. You can only take one unit of pox walkers for each core infantry Death Guard choice, so they're only ever going to be an element of a Death Guard army rather than the main threat. I'd argue that on stat line alone, pox walkers are one of the strongest 5 point per model troops choices. These things cost the same as Gretchen, Termagants, or Brimstone Horrors, and they're just so much better. In their stat line, they have a movement of just 4, weapon skill 4+, plus, strength 3, toughness 4, 1 wound, 2 attacks, leadership 4, and a 7 plus save. They're further protected by their unending horde special rule, which effectively gives them a 6 plus feel no pain. On top of this, with their fodder special rule, they also auto pass morale checks, which is pretty decent in a low leadership troops choice, as it effectively gives them another layer of durability on a reasonable counter to them. Overall, they're very slow, really quite durable point for point, Toughness 4 usually costs significantly more points than this, and have some mediocre damage in melee that won't be too bad against hordes. They're armed only with improvised weapons, which are just strength user, AP nothing and damage 1. Though in melee they will hit a bit stronger than you might expect, as they do have contagions of Nurgle, so enemy units will be minus 1 toughness as well. It'll mean they'll be wounding other light infantry like Tyranid Termagants or Imperial Guard on 3s, and they'll even be wounding things like Space Marines and Orcs on 4s. Unless they do manage to catch one of their more ideal targets, they're not likely to be killing too many enemies in combat, though their Curse of the Walking Pox rule is really quite nice if they do manage to destroy something. The Curse of the Walking Pox effectively reanimates one Pox Walker, so if you've already lost casualties in the Pox Walker unit, then they can come back this way. It effectively adds yet another layer of durability to the unit, as in certain circumstances you might get some models back. On top of all this toughness, they do have the Objective Secured rule from the core rulebook, making them pretty much ideal objective holders. Their main limitations are that they don't have the core keyword, so no re-rolls from characters for the most part. They don't have the bubonic astartes keyword, which also prevents a bunch of interactions and means that they can't embark in most transport vehicles. And they have the slightly annoying mindless horde special rule, which means that aside from doing one action from the Death Guard unique secondaries, they can't do normal actions. You can't use pox walkers to raise banners or deploy scramblers, which is kind of a shame, as they are a unit that would be ideally placed to do so. It does kind of make sense lore-wise to me though, they are effectively mindless zombies, and mindless zombies very rarely do what they're told, or have much grasp of grand strategy. Overall, I'd describe Poxwalkers as a pretty excellent chaff unit for the Death Guard, really cheap, and getting the absolute maximal amount of durability out of those points, and durability is the main thing that you want out of screening and objective holding units anyway. So let's talk about the different options open to pox walkers to making them stronger in game. Firstly, we've already mentioned Contagions of Nurgle, makes their melee far better against Toughness 4 and Toughness 3. It makes them pretty solid at dragging down light infantry with poor armor saves, though it's still going to be fairly incidental damage to armored targets. A unit of 10 will around about drag down one Space Marine per turn. They're locked out of the vast majority of character buffs in terms of reroll auras and things like that. Typhus does have some natural synergy with them, he gives them all plus one strength in an aura around them, and to be fair that will certainly make them a lot more threatening. they will wound marines on threes, and any toughness three infantry on twos with the contagions of Nurgle. Typhus is really quite a big investment though, and you might have better things to do with him rather than just leading some pox walkers around, which could limit his choice of targets and ability to buff other units. You can use things like the contagion discipline on them, miasma of pestilence and putrescent vitality to make them harder to shift. Though if you are investing in putting these spells on the board, you're probably better off using it on something like a big unit of Terminators. I'd say it'd be kind of opportunistic to use them on Pox Walkers if it made sense to and the situation came up, rather than planning on it at the start of the game. While they can't receive buffs, sometimes they could be helpful to use some debuffs on enemy units. Pox Walkers can take some advantage of the various Contagion Warlord traits, the ones for each Plague Company, which can make enemy units worse while they're fighting them. Some Death Guard spells can help debuff the enemy while they're in combat, 
and the Noxious Blight Bringer could make a unit fight last, so the Poxwalkers have some chance to get some damage done first. In theory, they could profit from a Miasmic Malignifier to give them cover, though only having a 7 plus save, that's only going to go up to a 6 plus anyway, which isn't exactly much to write home about. Generally, Poxwalkers care a lot more about being in things like dense cover with minus 1 to hit, as that'll give them a better durability boost against most things. Without the Bubonic Astartes keyword, they can't go in most transports, but they can be put in strategic reserve, and you could actually fit quite a lot of Pox Walkers in reserve if you wanted to, if you wanted to have some really annoying harassment forces. They're only 2 power level for a squad of 10, and it could be really annoying to have some Pox Walkers turn up on turn 2 or turn 3, potentially outflank the enemy, and maybe even charge a unit on an objective and steal it away from them for a turn. Potentially putting a big unit of 20 Pox Walkers in reserve and then turning them up on turn 3 will genuinely disrupt the opponent's battle plans, and if they haven't screened you out properly, they might rapidly need to revert a lot of forces to their own deployment zone if they want to take down your Poxwalkers and stop you nabbing their home objective. In terms of stratagems, there really are quite a few that Poxwalkers can take advantage of. My favourite is Mutant Strain, for one command point, and this is the one that allows you to deal mortal wounds with them. Basically, you'll cause a lot of mortal wounds on the enemy, at the expense of taking some yourself. It means hit rolls of 6 will cause 1 mortal wound on the opponent, and hit rolls of 1 will cause 1 mortal wound on your own Poxwalker unit. You'll at least get your 6 plus feel no pain type save against those though. For 1 CP, this can be absolutely nuts. Say you charge your 20 man squad of Poxwalkers into a unit of 5 Sanguinary Guard, a foe that should be far better in melee than them. If you can manage to get them all hitting, you get 40 attacks, and you should get around 6 or 7 mortal wounds with them. You could wipe out a very good chunk of very valuable melee space marines before they even get to swing. That's on top of their normal damage as well, which might well be good for a fair few wounds on top of that. Even a unit of 10 averages 3 mortal wounds with that, so it could be good for finishing off a character if you can get them all swinging. Against highly armoured foes, you could also combine that with Creeping Blight, giving your wound rolls of 6 AP-4, really valuable when you don't have any AP whatsoever. In that Sanguinary Guard example, that's another really good value stratagem. It should be good for around another 3 wounds on the enemy unit on top of that. And then you can combine either of these with the Harbinger's stratagem, if you do happen to be in the Harbinger's Plague Company. For 1 command point, that's the Wrathful Dead, and it allows you to re-roll hit rolls with your Poxwalker unit. I'd always combine that with Mutant Strain, and just those 2 CP alone could give an 100 point unit of 20 Poxwalkers the average damage output of 10 mortal wounds on the enemy unit, never mind any actual damage output that they get from their regular attacks. I'm not sure if Harbingers are necessarily the most competitive play company out there, but they could be a really good twist on a Death Guard list, making Pox Walkers turn from being just chaff infantry holders to something that could genuinely delete units with a couple of CP's investment. Other than that, we've got the Dead Walk again. This is one command point for rolling 7d6, and each roll of a 3 plus will reanimate a Pox Walker who's added back to the unit. It should be getting around 4 or 5 Pox Walkers back, so it can be good to up the numbers in a pinch. This could also be used to potentially make a charge distance shorter if you desperately needed it. Finally, a bit more of a pricey one is Flash Outbreak. This could potentially give you another aura of your Warlord's Plague trait, and you could give that to the Poxwalkers. Perhaps a bit more niche, but again could be a way to surprisingly increase their damage output far more than it should be. In general though, the Poxwalkers, I'd personally not want to invest many points in buffs whatsoever, that's better for other Death Guard units, but I would most certainly consider using Mutant Strain and perhaps Creeping Blight to surprise the opponent with an insane amount of damage output from a unit that should generally be terrible against anything with high toughness and high armour saves, and obviously stack that with the Wrathful Dead if you happen to be Harbingers. So in general I think that Poxwalkers are really usable, and if I were running a Death Guard army I'd typically want to make room for at least a few small units of them. I think they'll typically add to the strength of most forces by giving you some nice durable chaff units that can be used for all sorts of purposes, even if you didn't make use of any of the damage dealing combos. If you were just marching them up the board, you can plonk some other durable units on the centre objectives, give the opponent one other thing to scrape off them, potentially screen out enemy units and block movement lanes, and could perhaps be the first unit forward so you can use Cloud of Flies to protect another key asset. I think that perhaps they're most suited to being a backfield camping unit, why use expensive Plague Marines or Terminators to hold an objective when you could use cheap Pox Walkers and perhaps be even more immovable? Typically, I think most enemies are going to struggle to remove 20 Pox Walkers from an objective more than 5 Plague Marines, and as they cost the same points, the Pox Walkers could make a lot more sense for that role. They've got a large unit footprint, so could easily be used to screen out Deep Strike as well, a long way away from the objective. Otherwise, you could just use them as nuisance units, 
either advancing into table quarters so you can get engaged on all fronts, or plonk them in strategic reserve as we said, and make some really annoying charges towards enemy units who didn't really want to have to chew through a big unit of poxwalkers before they go on to achieve their ends. At the start of each game I generally keep the plan fairly flexible for the poxwalkers, be sure to advance them on any turn that you're not charging as it's basically free movement, and use their decent unit footprint to spread out and give you a bit more board control. They might not get quite as much respect in terms of damage output compared with some of the other scarier units in the force, and it will be very satisfying to surprise some enemy elites with the mutant strain stratagem and drag them down to join the ranks of the undead. As we said, Harbingers, Pox Walkers in particular, for 2 CP, a 20 strong unit should theoretically put 10 mortal wounds on anything, plus another 5 wounds through their regular damage output on Space Marines. There's pretty much no unit in the game that can afford to take that kind of damage, particularly not from 100 points of chaff infantry. Generally, when compared with alternatives, I like them far better than cultists. Cultists cost the same points, but they aren't as tough, don't get obsec, and aren't fearless. Their main advantage is a little bit of range damage and being able to perform actions. Unless you're absolutely desperate for the unit to perform actions, then I'd take the pox walkers every time. The only other slight concern is that you might give your opponent a bit more of a viable target for anti-infantry weapons, which might otherwise be a bit wasted against a Death Guard army. To be honest though, with the way that Disgusting Resilience works, damage one weapons are actually fairly reasonable choices for going after Plague Marines, and Pox Walkers are just really really tough point for point, so I'm not sure this is the biggest worry in the world for me. As you can probably tell, I really like Pox Walkers, and I think they're a really solid option for the Death Guard. So let me know what you think of the unit down in the comments below. Have you managed to gripple anything to death with mortal wounds yet? Or have they just been very reliable holding objectives while the elites push up? Look forward to hearing your experiences down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, or we'll be hoping to keep a fair few more Death Guard videos coming over the coming weeks. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that I do have a Patreon page, which is what allows me to keep on making videos quite so regularly. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, such as seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, an automatic entry into the Allspex Tactics prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support the channel, then the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.